I'd like to give you a quick demo of the Threat Mapper product running. There are two components. We'll begin with the management console. This is a standalone GUI and API based tool that Carl uh, takes and converges all of the information and makes the calculations to identify the most vulnerable, the most significant vulnerabilities. And it does so by taking telemetry and data from deep fence sensors, which are deployed within production environments. We'll deploy the management console in a, in a, in a Docker environment. We'll spin it up, I'll show you how to do that. And then we'll deploy a sensor in a Kubernetes environment. So you can see how the two work together. Threat Mapper is entirely open source. And we're gonna start by deploying the management console. Um, the management console on Docker is deployed with a simple Docker compose file. So let's, let me find, here we go. So here I've got a shell on, on an Ubuntu machine running a digital ocean. And I'm gonna grab our Docker compose file. There we go. And then I'll run Docker compose to spin the console up. Docker has cached all the container images. So it will spin and start those images pretty quickly. It can take typically 30 seconds to a minute for those container images to get up and begin initializing. And as we'll see in a moment, once the management console begins, we'll log in, we'll register for an account, and we can register services against that management console, but it will also sit in the background, pulling in threat feeds from a range of different sources. It does that to build up our threat database so that we can then perform our vulnerability scan. Let's just grab the IP address. So it's this one here. And if I bring up a new tab, hit that. So it takes, as I said, about 30 seconds to a minute. So we'll give that a moment to load. We have the process running. Okay, so I'm going for about a minute. And here we are. So this is a new install. Um, from previous tests, it's cached my credentials, so I need to register again. The first user who accesses gets the option to register, and then, oops, let's stick up something at the end of that. First user who registers gets the option to register online, and then subsequently other users need are added through on the user management page through an invite from the first user. We can look at our topology, and you can see our digital ocean environment. And we have a server running in London. Here's the virtual machine um, running Docker. And you can see the processes which are running, the communications they're making. And in fact, you can even see down to the detail of our CVE check tool pulling threat feeds from various different sources. What we're going to do, first of all, is we're going to register a Kubernetes cluster with this system. So to do that, I need to grab the API key, or so, and then here I have a, a machine with um, Helm and kubectl pointing at a Docker cluster, at a Kubernetes cluster, and I'm going to run, I'm going to deploy the deep fence agents on that Kubernetes cluster. They will then call back and talk to our management console. So having followed the instructions for installing the management console, let's now jump down and let's add the defense repo to our management machine. And we're gonna install it. So I'll use this. Remote services are authenticated using the API key that I just copied. Whoops. Let's just do that again. So let's grab our API key here. And of course, we also need to put the IP address in of the console so that the agents know where to phone back to. And having done this, this will then deploy 
the deep fence sensor agents onto our Kubernetes cluster. So if we um, see them going. So, okay, so we have the agents running. I'll now come back to my topology chart and let's just move that. Let's take a look at DigitalOcean. And we've now got a Kubernetes cluster rendered inside our deep fence management console. It has three nodes. On those nodes, Threat Mapper has discovered there are a series of, of pods running, communicating with each other. And we can pick one of these nodes and we could kick off a vulnerability scan. So I could select all packages, scan an entire cluster and get started. This vulnerability scan takes the time to complete and really you should wait until, you're, until Threat Mapper is reported that it's downloaded the entire feeds. So let's go and take a look at one that I've installed earlier. Here is our demo system. This has been running for some time. Threat feeds are fully up to date. And again, we can zoom in and look at the assets that are running. So we can look what's running on NYC1. We have a, a host called DigitalOcean Agent. We have a number of different containers on that. We can see the flow. So we can see traffic hitting an Nginx worker process from the internet getting passing through to an Apache server, to MySQLD. And as you can see, we ran a vulnerability scan against this a little while ago. So we have a large amount of telemetry and information showing what is happening, what are the extant vulnerabilities on this system. Let's look at some of the vulnerability scans that Threat Mapper has run on the system. We've run scans against host environments. So we have a GCP host, this is a virtual machine, relatively safe. We've run scans against various different container images as well. So if we were to pick, um, say, this one at the bottom, there's a lot and huge amount of useful data here. I can delve in and look at this container running in production, and I can see what are the issues that have been found. Four critical issues on that container. We can jump in and look at one of those issues and, you know, specifically and see what's the attack vector. This is a network accessible exploit of low complexity. What's, what package caused the CVE? Get some metadata around the CVE itself. So an issue with NetKit Telnet. It's been fixed in a particular update and we have a link through to the full security, the full CVE link if we wish. Let's let say Debian do its thing. We also have an attack path for that CVE. This container is directly connected to the internet. So a network exploitable attack is very, very easy to mount by an attacker. The number of vulnerabilities that you see can be huge. Let's drill back and grab our summary. In this system, a small lightweight system, we've seen over a thousand vulnerabilities, containers with huge numbers of vulnerabilities, many of which are of low priority, hosts with vulnerabilities. How can you thin this down and identify what are the key issues that you need to address? That's where the most exploitable vulnerabilities calculation comes in. Threat Mapper doesn't just rank vulnerabilities. Threat Mapper also looks at how that vulnerability can be exploited and are there potentially active paths that may be able to exploit that. Here we begin with live connections going to, to a number of medium and low priority CVEs. This is the highest priority, something we may want to look at right now. But as we reflect, the real meat comes when we look at the critical vulnerabilities. These have been sorted after the live ones in order of risk and, and potential of exploit. It's illustrated here in our attack path. From the internet, in this case, we've identified three resources or three attack paths. You know, one which goes through multiple different hops in order to hit our MySQL server. 
with CVEs that we have assessed are at highest risk of exploit and have highest potential impact. You can take this information and you can either feed it automatically through a series of integrations to alert to your team, or you can zoom in and look just at those critical vulnerabilities and get the data that you need to feed back to your engineering team to ask them to prioritize those top five or 10 vulnerabilities in the applications that you're running in your environment. So that gives us a very, very quick whistle-stop tour of what you can do with Deep Fence Threat Mapper. Completely open source, ready to install and use now. And it provides the vulnerability detection that we've seen, the ability to build a threat map and to give you that actionable list of most exploitable vulnerabilities so you know what you need to fix first. <laughs> 